where we are now changes by the day. And so I just want to mention this as something that emerged on Monday, probably right as you were going to bed in Taiwan. I'll read from Ars Technica. On Monday, Anthropic released Claude 3, a family of three AI language models similar to those that power ChatGPT. Anthropic claims the models set new industry benchmarks across a range of cognitive tasks, even approaching, quote, near human, end quote, capability in some cases. According to Anthropic, Claude 3 Opus beats GPT-4 on 10 AI benchmarks. And just for context, AI researcher Simon Willison spoke, spoke with Ars Technica and said, as always, LLM benchmarks should be treated with a little bit of suspicion. How well a model performs on benchmarks doesn't tell you much about how the model feels to use, but this is still a huge deal. No other model has beaten GPT-4 on a range of widely used benchmarks like this. Uh, and I don't want to delve too deep into specifics because you haven't had a chance to really play with the model, but just in general, can you believe how quickly all this is moving? Like, is there any reference point for a tech landscape that has evolved this quickly in the past? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good question. Probably like the early days of the internet and the early days of PCs. Um, there is an aspect of this, the, the, you know, I, wrote an article a couple years ago called The End of the Beginning, where I actually went back to the dawn of the the automobile. One of my favorite pieces of yours, yeah. And there were just like tons and tons and tons of car companies started every year for like 20 years, like just a ton of them. And and because we were still figuring like out fundamental issues of the automobile and like how it might work and how to make them, how to produce them. Obviously, the huge innovation there was sort of Henry Ford and, and, and the assembly line. But, there, you know, and then GM having a we're going to have a differentiation strategy. We're going to have all these different brands and categories that different things. GM grew in part by buying up a bunch of those sort of other car companies. Not all of them were sort of products of GM sort of originally, but in the end, then we ended up with like three, right? And that's the payoff. If you, at the beginning, it's a gold rush. There's a mass amount of like, let me become sort of a big player. If you win, the returns are astronomical. So it's worth it to risk the fact you're going to be one of the 97% that flame out because if you're the 3% or the 1% or the 0.1%, the returns are just so huge. This is the beauty of the venture model sort of in practice. Like, like that's yeah. the idea is you just got to get one winner and it will make up for all the sort of bad bets. And it's great. We have an ecosystem that sort of funds this and we are absolutely in the gold rush era of AI. This was the, this is part of the, the current bull case for NVIDIA People are price insensitive. They will buy whatever sort of GPUs well, they can get their hands people, on. It's also trillion dollar companies that are just like, yeah, we're not going to miss yeah, out people, on this. By <laughs> people, I mean, you know, every sort of uh, sentient being or non sentient corporation, uh, they will buy whatever <laughs> GPUs they get their hands on, right? Link check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, there, there's lots of models coming along. Mistral's latest model is very, very impressive. Uh, you know, quad, you know, anthropic coming along with a model that's called GPT-4. Now, it's worth noting, GPT-4 was trained in 2022. Like, they're they're working on polishing off GPT-5 at some point. So I think OpenAI is, broadly speaking, again, not having used sort of Claude yet, but is still, you know, in the big picture in the lead. But mm -hmm. what it speaks to is two things. Number one, the lead might not matter in the long run because there might just be a collection of foundation models, all of which are very good. And if there's a collection, that's not good for profitability in the long run because there's high competition and it ends up being more of a commodity. And this is generally the case that happens by and large, and it's probably going to happen foundation models where the real money to be made is going to be a layer above where you productize it and you make something that is compelling for people. And maybe that's integrated where the product is integrated into the model like ChatGPT. ChatGPT isn't a foundation model. ChatGPT is a product. Right. right. And, and it's a product that is fully integrated into the foundation model. But, you know, it, 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 it's it's sort of moving up the stack and you can move up further into these different companies that are doing things with LLMs. And that's not to say that being being this can't be profitable. It's just that your approach is more high volume, low margin. And, and, and you know, it in not the long the run. So, Google. Yeah. Right. So this this speaks to that dynamic a bit. Number one. Number two, this ties back into what we were just talking about. The risk for Google is that there are actually a bunch of AIs and there could be another AI that people prefer. Now, it by from what I've seen slash heard, Quad and ChatGPT and and Llama and and Google 
all happen to have San Francisco area politics, right? Like there's a bit where that may be sort of inescapable. The, you know, the big question is, you know, maybe it doesn't matter just because no one else actually builds a functional foundation model that that is sort of open or, or broadly appealing. But to the extent there is, that shows the risk factor I'm talking about sort of sort of in this regard. Mm -hmm. The third thing I would say, and just speaks to sort of Simon Willison's point, is measuring these models is getting really, really hard. Uh, number one, like who's making the measurements, who has the right incentive structure to do it? Like, you know, Nat Freeman mentioned in the interview with him last week, you know, the, 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 the current dominant evaluation standard was made by some undergrad student, <laughs> like just, you know, and it's right. become well, like and, the standard and it's about to get saturated. Anthropic was the one who was releasing the measurements today. So I think it remains to be seen how it measures up as more objective parties uh, digest all of this. Well, the other bit too is there's so much already. There's so much GPT or or model produced text on the internet that it's it's going to get. It might be impossible to sort of measure going forward. There's no more like clean data sets, and so like there was you have this bit in here. I'm sort of like stealing your role, but talking about you know, wow, it's incredible. I fed this huge amount of text into Opus. And I put like I inserted one sentence that didn't make sense and it found it, the needle in the haystack. I was mm -hmm. just marveling about this last week in the context of, of Gemini 1.5 and sort of having that capability. There's also a bit where it, it, part of this marveling wasn't just that it found it, but also said, oh, I think you're trying to trick me. I think you're trying to right. test me. <laughs> I found the needle and I can tell you're screwing with me. So there's the That's human -like behavior there. No, that, that's not human-like behavior. That's evidence that there's lots of texts of the internet of people posting about them trying to trick these models ah. and talking about it. That's how it knows it's being tricked, right? And so it, it, to me, that's actually evidence that we're starting to see this recycling of of, of tokens of, of like what's been produced going back into these models. And it's going to be really- just ruined the fun. I was really enjoying the pizza trick that Claude 3 Opus played on, on the engineering team out there, but sure- yeah, how does the model know that it's it, it, it's being tricked, right? Because th that's yeah. what was remarkable about the answer. It wasn't just that it found it. It said, ah, ha, ha, you're trying to get me. It knows that because people have been posting about trying to get the models, right? And, oh, mm -hmm. wow, look, at it found this sort of thing. And, you know, the, the implications of this in the long run, what it means as these models are increasingly trained on other models sort of output, maybe it makes this whole problem worse about having a particular point of view, right? Maybe, like, maybe we can generate synthetic sort of tokens that that are are compelling or interesting. I mean part of Mistral's sort of thesis is they spend a lot of time having super clean well structured data and spending a lot of time like prepping that on the way in and the idea being like if you have really really good data you can have a smaller model that has really good results. And maybe you know the the sort of trade off between oh hey, let's scour the whole web versus you know, maybe the cost of these foundation models are let's spend a few hundred million dollars paying a bunch of people to write questions and answers to actually give like, you know, make sure the data is like very, very accurate. That's going to be really interesting. I mean, a human job in the future may be producing training data for AIs like like that's oh, uh, so we'll, we'll see it, 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 it. I mean, so this none of this is to diminish Anthropic and their accomplishment. And I just think some of the broader st structural points it brings up are pretty interesting. No, yeah, and it, it's just, for me, processing all of this, it's almost like the first couple days of NBA free agency where there's a big move, and then six hours later, there's another big move, and then the next day, there's another big move. It feels like that's what AI has been, except it's been like that for like, 16 months now where yep. every week there's a new massive story that is a game changer and we all just sort of adjust our expectations and then the next week it happens again and so i don't know when this cycle is going to end but it's pretty wild to live through and watch it, do, it does seem to go through mind. stages it doesn't go through stages the spring seems to be the big like last year last spring was also insane and then yeah. it kind of slowed down over the summer and everyone's like oh is no one using chat gpt anymore turned out students just weren't in school uh and then like all these sort of uh, you know, bits and pieces, Core. but yeah, I, but yeah, if you zoom out at a high level, like the, the level of, of changes that happen in just a year is astronomical. And I think that's going to continue for, for, for quite a while. Again, the car era took 20, no longer than that. It took like 30, 40 years to sort of shake out the, the, you know, when I started Stratechery, it was so exciting. And I thought I was too late to miss it. Like the whole like smartphone, who's going to win that was 2013. It already been going for six years. 
mm-hmm. by 2015, 2016, it was pretty settled. It was pretty clear that about the duopoly and that Apple was not going to be, you know, disrupted by Android, which was the case when I, yeah, everyone, that was the conventional wisdom when I started. And I got a lot of traction about saying, no, that's not going to happen. But so that we had a probably a good nine year cycle with smartphones of just yeah. like shaking it out and seeing how this structure, the structure is going to be. Uh, PCs probably lasted, you know, depending when you want to mark the start, like 19, like you, it's not, it didn't just start with windows. It started with like the Commodore and like the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the Tandy and like, you know, all these other sort of ideas for what a PC would be starting in the seventies. And then it probably fully settled in probably the end of the exciting PC era was probably 1995, the release of windows mm-hmm. 95 windows dominance was solidified, not just in the enterprise, but also in the consumer space. The Mac was an also run and everyone else was dead. And and so we had a good 20 years of shakeout in the PC era and Intel's releasing a new processor every year or every two years or whatever. And it was just the old ones completely obsolete and all these things were happening. And now who thinks about their PC at all, right? right. Um, AI will probably, you know, the potential impacts and use cases and applications are so huge. Like we're still in the, we're still talking about foundation models. We have a whole era of actually building products that are built on, on, on these things. We have a whole era of figuring out what's going to happen with chips. Like right now, GPUs are King. It just seems inevitable at some point, given the, the costs involved and the energy involved, we're going to end up with specialized chips that that are specific for particular models and are just way more efficient and way faster. Like this is why the Grok thing is sort of interesting. Not saying they're the answer, but we're going to end up there sort of somewhere, which ties into, you know, where's NVIDIA going to sort of be in the long run? Where's that going to work out? Uh, You know, maybe I'm wrong. And it's like CISC versus RISC, where RISC was definitely better, but Intel realized CISC was ahead. They should sort of stick with it and they were right. Maybe GPUs are theoretically worse but there's so much infrastructure built up around them they end up being dominant uh, tbd and uh which is great that's why that's why i'm excited to be here i'm excited to talk to you it, it, it's it's the well, second I, wind of strategy right like I, I i mean by four oh actually we have I, I have to put this in the daily update we actually watched another youtube channel which is uh strategy articles it's just like ah. the main articles that are illustrated and sort of my voiceover and you know, I, I brought on, uh, you know, uh, someone who, uh, J- Johnny Udo's Asianometry is helping me sort of make these videos. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I've kind of reduced to doing an article every other week. I used to do it every week. And poor guy's drowning because I'm like back every <laughs> week. I'm like pounding these out. There's so much happening and, and it's exciting. It's great for me. That's for sure.